Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to Chem Connection that provides you with regulatory news in between ChemCon conferences. In this Chem Connection, we're making a round the world tour and talk to several people to discuss the regulatory updates in their region, touching on the developments in 2022 as well as expectations for 2023. We'll focus on regulatory developments in Latin America, USA, the Asia Pacific, and Europe. We will start with Europe, where in 2022 the European Commission has been working at full steam on the implementation of the Chemical Strategy for Sustainability. It seems that regulatory changes will bring more obligations on industry and authorities, but the strategy also refers to simplifying and consolidating of legislation. So I asked Christina de Avila, head of the Sustainable Chemicals Unit at DG Environment, what initiatives are taking in this area. Uh, moving towards a one substance, one assessment approach is the most important initiative in this regard. As you know, the EU regulatory framework on chemicals is comprehensive and complex and consists of over 40 pieces of legislation. There are differences among the legislative pieces in the assessment of chemicals. Assessments are triggered at different times by different actors and they're based on different data sets. They are performed by the various uh, scientific committees and they use different methodologies and they have different transparency regimes. So the initiative on One Substance One Assessment aims to improve the effectiveness, the efficiency and the coherence of safety assessments of chemicals across legislation. The Chemicals Strategy announced a number of actions to achieve this objective and we are preparing three legislative initiatives for the next year, all planned for the second quarter of 2023. First, the legislative proposal on streamlining the assessment of chemicals to EU agencies. Second, the legislative proposal for a basic regulation of the European Chemicals Agency. And third, a legislative proposal on better access to chemicals data for safety assessments. In my conversation with Christina, we cover a wide range of other topics related to the EU chemical strategy for sustainability. From the main deliverables the Commission currently is focusing on, like the region CLP revision, the eco design for sustainable products regulation, and other parts of the ambitious European regulatory agenda for chemicals in 2023 including what kind of important initiatives we can expect for the competitiveness of the chemical sector in the EU. So, if you want to know what you can expect in 2023 in Europe, it's highly recommended to watch my complete conversation with Christina on YouTube. And if you want to have first-hand information from the authorities themselves, please join us in San Francisco, where especially the Wednesday is fully packed with European and sustainability topics. The Thursday at Chemcon the Americas is focusing on global approaches to data sharing, new chemicals and polymer notifications, and of course the developments in the Asia-Pacific region. To already get an appetite for the most important regulatory developments in the Asia-Pacific region, I talked with Sume Teo from ExxonMobil. Among others, Sume discusses Thailand and Vietnam who are both developing their respective chemical inventories. And we discussed the expectations around the Indian chemical management and safety rules, something industry is trying to keep track of. I also asked Sume if she could provide an update on the implementation of MEE Order 12 and other developments in China. By now, MEE Order 12, the revised regulation to manage new substances, have been in place for almost two years. The simplification made for lower risk chemicals like polymers and low volumes of grade less than one ton a year has been appreciated. However, the industry experience is that data requirements are generally higher and tougher with full notifications, and approval rates of the full notifications are lower as well. It was also interesting to note that the authorities stepped up enforcement this year and several non-compliant companies were then penalised. Industry is very keenly following MEE's plans on existing chemicals. Over the last few years, we have seen MEE developing and shaping their chemicals plans for broad chemical management framework. While new chemicals are already well managed, now through Order 12 that I have just mentioned, the framework to manage existing chemicals is now starting to fall into place. The draft regulation on environmental risk assessment and control of toxic and hazardous chemical substances was published in 2020 and it provides the overarching framework for managing new and existing chemicals. There's also the guidelines for screening of priority assessment chemicals finalized about a year ago. Publication of the priority control list over the last five years. Consulting on key control new pollutant lists just this September and more. It's like pieces of a puzzle uh, to form a full picture of how MEE will manage all chemicals. And that full picture is presented in the publication of the Emerging Pollutants Management Action Plan just this May. 
where there's clear emphasis on persistent organic pollutants, endocrine disrupting chemicals, as well as antibiotics. On the other hand, the Ministry of Emergency Management, MEM, is also upgrading the Decree 591 into a higher level hazardous chemicals safety law. This will be a very important law to manage the handling of hazardous chemicals through the supply chain, so industry is also following closely. MEM has been piloting trials to use QR codes in conjunction with safety labeling with the intent to more efficiently transfer chemical hazards information through the whole life cycle and supply chain. I like the QR code principle. It's something we also use in our ChemCon calendar so that people can watch the ChemCon TV interviews that are linked with unique ChemCon cartoons. Send us an email if you're interested in one of these calendars. This cartoon was used in an interview on state initiatives and ingredient communication. With ChemCon the Americas 2023 in California, we've chosen a Monday morning for an in-depth seminar on California and other state perspectives on chemical control legislation. So do not miss out on this unique opportunity. The Tuesday is reserved for Canada and of course US Tosca. In November we have learned that EPA proposed to significantly increase the fees chemical manufacturers would have to pay to evaluate chemical risks and that EPA would expand the fees by companies that mix but don't make chemicals. I discussed Tosca developments with Michael Goodeker of Buc. Michael, can you tell us more about this fee increase proposal? Yeah, a proposal came out from EPA that I'm sure everyone is going to be watching very closely, and that is the proposed fee rule, which modifies the 2021 proposal. Uh, under Tosca, EPA is allowed to collect fees from the regulated community to offset 25% of the program costs for implementing sections 4, 5, and 6 of Tosca. Uh, what this essentially means is that the cost to notify chemicals to the EPA, it's going to increase significantly. A PMN, we're seeing it increase from $19,020 all the way to $45,000. A low volume exemption is going to go from $5,590 all the way to $13,200. And a big one is going to be EPA initiated risk evaluations. Those are increasing from $2.56 million all the way to over $5 million. Um, it's also worth mentioning that EPA is considering adding a fee to companies that submit a bona fide notice or notice of commencement. But you know, after considering comments from industry, different uh, organizations, EPA is not moving forward with that. So uh, that's good for the chemical industry. Uh, furthermore, EPA is also looking at issuing partial refunds for withdrawn PMNs based on where they stand in the process. It can range anywhere from 75% if it's withdrawn within 10 days of uh, EPA beginning their review, and it can go all the way to 20% if it's withdrawn within five days after receiving a notice that EPA completed the review process. Uh, as you can see, Chair, there's been a lot going on at EPA, not only looking at existing chemicals, but new chemicals, and you know also their plan for helping fund the future of Tosca. Besides his predictions for 2023, Michael also talks about EPA's progress with existing chemicals, especially the Work Plan 10 and High Priority 20 in relation to risk evaluations and directions towards risk management. And he mentions developments in relation to the new Chemical Substances Program, as well as an update in relation to the CBI requirements under TOSCA. Michael also mentions that companies that have PFAS are required to report information to EPA, something relevant for many industry sectors. I asked Nidia Galfo Mendes from HP Inc. what the most important regulatory challenges for the electronics industry around the globe are to focus on now and in 2023. Well, in general, for the electronics industry, I can foresee definitely a more stringent scenario related to specific chemicals such as PFAS, flame retardants, microplastics, PFOS, you know, POPs, etc. You know, um, PFAS right now is a burning topic in the US. So uh, with the state and federal regulations, I really believe that it will rapidly ramp, ramp up to other countries and regions, and we will face reporting, uh, maybe banning, maybe some, uh, I don't know, restrictions of the products containing uh, these substances in the future. Nidia and I also extensively discussed the most notable regulatory developments in Latin America in 2022, like in Chile and Colombia. While Chile and Colombia are the only countries in Latin America that have established a chemical policy management in, or inventory, other countries in Latin America, including Brazil and Argentina, are in the process of drafting chemical frameworks. Chile and Colombia published their chemical management regulations in 2021. 
but it has been during 2022 that they both have defined different and important paths for the manufacturers or importers that they need to follow in order to comply with the legal requirements from their GHS implementation and the creation of a chemical inventory of chemicals entering the different markets in these countries. In the extended version on our YouTube channel, Nidia tells us more about imported path through the Latin America legislation jungle. And she provides some examples what needs to be done and the expected benefits. Furthermore, we discuss developments in Argentina, Brazil and Mexico, as well as the updated roadmap of the Latin America Regulatory Cooperation Forum. All topics that will be extensively discussed in our Latin America and GHS in the America seminar on Monday afternoon, March 30 in San Francisco. On Monday morning, we kickstart the conference with a hands-on workshop, What You Need to Know When Reversing the Global Supply Chain, where we discuss a case study for the semiconductor industry. This workshop is inspired by the Chips for America bill. The Biden administration indicated that by making more semiconductors in the United States, it will increase domestic manufacturing and lower costs for families. And President Biden said, it will strengthen our national security by making us less dependent on foreign sources of semiconductors. In our workshop, we will discuss chemical compliance in such a very complex supply chain with, among others, topics like rose legislation and nanomaterials. We will finish ChemCon the Americas with an entire Friday morning on supply chain communication and product stewardship strategies. This seminar will help you organizing and setting your priorities for handling global regulatory challenges. Of course, in a good networking ambience with your peers within industry and authorities. Now, at the end of the year, it's always a great period for reflection and an excellent time to form New Year's resolutions. For inspiration on regulatory developments around the world, do not forget to watch the extended videos of my conversations with Christina, Sume, Nidia and Michael on our YouTube channel. For now, thank you for watching and on behalf of the Chemcom team, I wish you a happy and healthy holiday season and wish you all the best in achieving your personal as well as your regulatory resolutions.